What's going on guys? In this video, we're going to learn how to find the future value and the present value. We're going to learn about the formulas here. Uh, you can do either in Excel or Google Sheets. Uh, and in my last video, up in the right hand corner right over here, you can check out that is how to find payment, the formula to find payment. But we're going to dive right in and we're going to start with future value. So to find the future value, you can do this for a number of reasons, whether you're paying off something or you're investing. We're going to use an investing example here. You want to know if you are, if you have $1,000, you are expecting the market to go up 10% over the next 10 years. If you are invest an additional $12,000 a year or an additional $1,000 a month, how much will you have in the future? So the formula is pretty easy, pretty straightforward. We're going to hit equals FV for future value. And it's right here. You could click on it. Click on that little question mark. It'll kind of tell you what it wants. And if you're still confused, you could click down here. And it'll give you more of an explanation. But again, it's really simple. So the first thing it's asking for is the rate. So we're going to click on the rate cell right here. We're going to hit comma. The next thing is number of periods. Here's our number of periods, 10. We're going to hit that. Hit comma. Payment amount. We're putting in additional $12,000 a year. That's $1,000 a month. Comma. The last one is your present value. Here's the present value right here. $1,000. We're going to close off the parentheses. We're actually then going to multiply it by negative 1. The reason why we're multiplying it by negative one is because the way this uh, is reading, this is reading that you have a payment, that this is debt, not an investment. So what it's pretty much saying is, oh, you have, you owe a thousand dollars in debt and every year you're accumulating another $12,000 in debt. But that's not the case. You have a thousand dollars in equity and you're putting in an additional $12,000 in cash into your investment vehicle. So that's why you just need to reverse that with the future value and make it negative one. We hit enter and there you go, $193,842. What's great about this is you can start to mess around with the numbers. Instead of a thousand, what if you had 10,000 to start with? Wow, it'd be $200,000. Instead of a rate of 10, what if you had a rate of 15? What if you only had a rate of five? You could see, what about the years? What if it's over 30 years? Okay, great. What if it's, so, uh, what if you aren't investing as much? You're only investing maybe an additional thousand dollars a year. Whatever it might be, you can mess around with the numbers and you can see what your future value is going to be. Now, if we jump over to finding your present value, just like future value, we're going to hit equals, okay? And we're going to do PV for present value. Click on that. Same deal will give you instructions of what it's looking for. So our rate right here, 10%. We're going to hit the comma and then our number of periods, comma, our payment, comma, negative future value. We got to hit that negative button because remember, future needs to be negative. So when we're finding the future value, we need to make the entire formula negative. By doing that, we just multiply it by negative one. For finding present value, we just need the future value negative. So we're putting a negative within it. We're hitting that, closing off the parentheses, and there you go. Gives us the answer. Here's how much we need to invest in presently to reach our goal of a million dollars. So let's say our payment was not a hundred, but something a little bit more reasonable, say a thousand dollars a month. I mean, a thousand dollars a year. And maybe over the number of periods, instead of 10, it was, maybe we're looking at 20. You can see it drops significantly. If you're young, you got 40 years, you can even see it's a negative. As in, you don't need to invest that much to reach a million dollars over the course of 40 years. So what if you're only investing, say, $5,000 a year? $600 a month? You still don't even need to invest that much. This is crazy. What about a thousand a year? There you go. So if you want a million dollars and you have 40 years left in your career, you're in your 20s, 
your present value, if you are putting in an additional $1,000 uh, a year, not a month, a year, you only need $12,000 to reach that million. If you don't have that $12,000, no problem. As long as you're putting in an additional $2,000 a year, your present value only needs to be $2,500. And 3,000, you don't even need that, right? So you can mess around with the numbers and you can make sure everything's right. If this is saying, I need this, you could you could test it. So we could test it out. Let's do 2536.83. Bring this to 40 years and then this to 2,000 and this to 10%. There you go. So the numbers play out. You can see, you know, with, with a couple of cents off, but you can see that our formulas are accurate and they're working together. So you can figure out, okay, I only have $1,000. So if I have $1,000 to my name right now and I want to contribute $2,500, um, whoops, $2,500 a year over 40 years, how much will I have? Great, I'll have a million dollars. Or on the flip side, if you want to reach a million dollars by a certain age, say, I don't want it to be 40 years. I want it to be 30 years. So sure enough, you could go over here, type in 30, and then just figure it out. Okay, let's see, 1,000, 2,000. You could plug all these in until you get to the right number, but that's tedious. But instead, we already have it right here. If we want a million dollars by 30 years, boom, $38,000. That's how much we need. We could test it out over here. 38454.72. Hit enter. There we go. There's our uh, 1 million. Whoops. 2,000. There we go. There's our 1 million or just about 1 million. Again, it's a couple pennies off, but that's okay. This is present value and future value. The last thing that I want to show you with it all, uh, because you may be asking, with the payment, yeah, we're saying over the course of a year, but what if you really want to get down to even the months, right? So what you'd have to do for the formula up here, so if we go into the formula, right, our rate, so our rate is 10% a year, but if we want to have monthly payments instead of annual payments, we just take this C5, we want to divide it by 12, okay? And then for our number of periods, that 30, C6, want to multiply that by 12, okay? And then our payments will end up changing. Instead, our payments would, we could now divide this, say we were thinking, okay, I want to invest $250 a month. I don't want to look annually. I want to look at monthly, and then that could help you out. You could, you could get similar results this way. So instead of looking at here, just to not confuse you, annual payment, or contribution, whatever you want to call it, monthly payment. So now you know how to find if you're looking for annual or monthly. If it's annual, you don't need to worry. It's really easy. If you do want to switch up to monthly payments, then this is all you have to do. You have to divide the rate by 12, and you have to multiply the number of periods by 12. There's 12 months in a year. So your payment periods are going to be multiplied by 12 because you're putting in $250 every month, not $2,000 or $3,000 a year. So that's why you have to have that multiplied by 12 and you have to cut the rate by 12. So 10 divided by 12, which equals 0 0.083 repeating or something like that. But that's pretty much it. That is future value and present value. If you like this video, make sure to hit that like button. If you haven't subscribed already, hit that subscribe button as well. If you have any questions, put it down in the comments. If you're confused by any of this, just rewind that video. I'm sure the second time around will make more sense. Other than that, I'll see you guys in the next one.